hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another video up at the woodland uh, base camp so yeah i just wanted to talk about dutch ovens or camp ovens as they're sometimes called or woodsman ovens or stew pots uh, they have lots of different names um, so i own three i've got a, a petromax one litre dutch oven the ft1 I've got a Ronnie Sunshine's 4 litre Dutch oven, which is this one. And I've got a Ronnie Sunshine's 8 litre one. So I'm going to be using them all over the weekend. Um, but I think the most versatile is the 4 litre Dutch oven. Now I've had this for, oh, must be best part of 15 years, I think. Um, this size, the 4 litre one, is probably ideal to keep in the back of your 4x4 vehicle if you're heading out on a trip. They're really useful for a, a couple of things. When we went down to Morocco um, a few years back, you can't always guarantee that you can find a supermarket and get supermarket packaged cuts of meat like steak or chicken breasts or what have you. Sometimes you have to just go to the village butcher and just point at stuff. Uh, so you could end up with meat that needs roasting like joints or um, chicken thighs and all that kind of stuff. And you can do that in a Dutch oven. Um, you can just hang it over a bed of coals, hang it over a fire, and the lids have, if you can make that out, a, a lip going around. So you can, um, you can put hot embers or hot coals on top, or even build a, a fire if you want, if you need a, a lot of heat on top. And uh, the cast iron just heats up and you can roast meat um, easily. So yeah, this evening I'm going to cook a Moroccan dish actually. I'm going to cook a, a lamb tagine or a Moroccan lamb stew. The tagine is actually the vessel that the stew is cooked in, the conical shaped clay pot. Um, I do have one at home actually and I was going to bring it and use it on the campfire but I don't think the internet's ready for that type of stuff yet. But you can, you can do a, a Moroccan uh, stew in a Dutch oven, easy enough. So yeah, so I'm going to get the fire going and I'll take you through the ingredients. So as you can see here, the, the fire pit's a bit damp because of all the rain we've had. So uh, one of the best things to do if you're going to use a Dutch oven, what you want is uh, a good bed of coals. So if you build yourself a bit of a platform out of wood, I mean you can use uh, you know round logs or, or whatever. I've just got some good seasoned oak here, which will which will do the job perfectly. And then you build your fire on top of this. And as the fire burns down, um, these logs will catch and they'll burn uh, nice and slowly. So folks, this is the ingredients for tonight's stew. We've got some uh, lamb steaks, but you can use uh, diced stewing lamb or even uh, diced beef in this recipe works equally as well. We've got some dates and some tomato passata but you can also use just a, a tin of chopped tomatoes that'll work just as well. We've got some fresh ginger, garlic, salt and pepper, some turmeric, I've got some smoked paprika, an onion, some saffron, some olives and some ras el hanu which is the main spice in Moroccan uh, tagines. I think the word Ras El Hanou translates from Arabic into top of the shelf and it's basically the spice seller's finest spices. So you can buy different types of Ras El Hanou and they all seem to taste a little bit different. Um, I've got a, a bag of fresh coriander there. Uh, that will add a beautiful taste to the stew. And I'll be serving it with some yoghurt alongside a, a Moroccan medley a packet of couscous by Ainsley Harriet. <laughs> so yeah, it's a very simple meal, um, dead easy, totally uncomplicated, and you'll you'll get such a, a rich, lovely flavour from it. Well, folks, that's the uh, the stew over the coals. I've got it suspended about six inches above, um, which should give it a, a nice slow heat. 
and I'll aim to cook this stew for about 45 minutes I think. Obviously if you're cooking some type of stewing steak in there you might want to keep it on for two hours or two or three hours even. So you've got to be a bit more vigilant around the fire and make sure you've got a really good bed of coals that are going to continue to burn for such a long time. But the steak is quite easy, should be done in 40 minutes. Well folks, the tagine is done. I didn't need to add any extra water. It's reduced quite nicely. And we are serving it with some couscous there and some yogurt with coriander, mint and um, cucumber. So uh, I'm just looking forward to getting stuck in. I'm, I'm starving. I can't believe how dark it's got. Well, morning guys. It's a bit chilly last night. Um, it's a bit of a north wind blowing, so the temperature's dropped. Uh, it was a fairly blustery night as well, but anyway. Um, yeah, so last night we cooked the lamb tagine here in the four litre Dutch oven. The dark came in pretty early, so I didn't get great footage of the meal, but it was uh, spot on. Although I did find it, we did lose a little bit of moisture. And that's because this lid is uh, doesn't fit perfectly. So that's the the four litre uh, Dutch oven, um, and I have the uh, the eight litre one here. You can see the size difference, approximately twice the size. Um, but this oven, it's, it's fairly heavy, weighs about ten kilo, I think. But um, it's a big one, eight litres in volume. You can easily cook uh, a chicken in there or something like that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to bake a loaf of bread in this oven and then for dinner this evening we're going to have a steak sandwich and I'm going to use the, the lid of the Dutch oven to fry the steak on. So that's another advantage of a Dutch oven. Uh, you can use the lid as a skillet. So I picked up uh, Ray Mayer's latest book a couple of weeks ago. It's called The Wilderness Chef, The Ultimate Guide to Cooking Outdoors and I can recommend it. I think over the past uh, couple of years my camp cooking skills have kind of stagnated a little bit. I tend to do the same things over and over again. Um, so yeah, this is a great book. There's loads of good ideas in here and there's uh, plenty of recipes that you can use with uh, camp ovens or Dutch ovens or whatever you want to call them. And today I'm going to try one of his bread recipes. I don't often eat bread to be honest um, and I rarely bake it either. <laughs> so I don't really know how it's going to turn out. But it's uh, just a camp oven white loaf. Um, so yeah, let's give it a go. Right folks, so for this recipe you need 500 grams of strong white bread flour, which I've got in this big mixing bowl here. I've put a one and a half teaspoons of salt in and you need to put in two, two and a half teaspoons of fast action yeast which I have in these little sachets here and then on top of that you just need to put in two tablespoons of oil and then mix it with 500 ml of cold water so that's that's mixed together now I'm just going to add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil here but you can use butter. Right, so let's have a go at this. Two hundred and fifty mil first. About half of that. That's slightly more than half. Now, probably gonna have to get in there, get my hands dirty. I've got some uh, 
some extra flour here just to dust the board while I knead the bread. Well folks, that was a bit of a messy job, but the bread's in the car now, so I'll leave it there for a few hours. I just wanted to talk about some uh, accessories that are useful if you're gonna get into Dutch oven cooking. Um, it's not essential, but a lid lifter is pretty useful. It's just got a hook there and, and, a, and a flat bit of bar going across and it allows you to hook under the Dutch oven handle and to, to lift it off. And once you've lifted your um, lid off, it's a good idea to have some kind of trivet. This is just a, a folding one and you can place your lid on top of that because you don't really want to be putting it straight on top of the dirt. Um, you're going to need some form of tongs, especially if you're going to be putting hot coals on top of the Dutch oven. Uh, so they're useful. Now what I've done is I've made myself a, a Dutch oven spoon, which is fairly long. I just carved this very quickly out of a bit of hazel from the woodlands here. And you can see I've put, put an angle there on the end, just so I can reach over and scrape the bottom of the, uh, of the Dutch oven without kind of burning all the hairs off my forearm if the fire's roaring away. So uh, I've used this quite a bit actually, it's quite useful. Um, it's probably a good idea to get some decent fire gloves as well. I mean, I tend to use these thin leather ones quite a bit, but having a proper pair of um, fire gloves is, is a good idea. And I think that's all you need really. So yeah, just a few uh, simple accessories. It makes the process a little bit easier. Well, folks, I've just got the fire going. It's about quarter to five now. Uh, Saturday on a bank holiday weekend. So, that's beer o'clock. It's been a really miserable day, actually. It's pretty much uh, rained on and off for the last three or four hours. And uh, it seems to be a bit overcast and pretty dark, pretty miserable. It's as if the autumn's come early. But I'm gonna let this fire burn for a while until I've got a good bed of heat and then we'll go and get that loaf and stick it on and see what happens. Looks like a giant pasty, doesn't it? Right guys, this has been on now for 45 minutes. So I'm pretty sure it's done. I have piled a lot of coals on top. Perhaps too many. That's not too bad. Bit of burnage on the top, but uh, I'm happy with that. So that wasn't the best looking loaf of bread in the world, but you know, you're cooking it over a campfire. But um, I'm just gonna give it the taste test. Hmm. That was really nice. Right guys, we've got a really good bed of coals here. So I'm gonna get the, the lid of the eight litre Dutch oven onto the fire. And I'm gonna use this to, to fry some onions. Then I'm gonna fry the steak and then fry some mushrooms. Um, so obviously there's no stands on the bottom of this that you, you do get with the more expensive Dutch ovens like the, the Petromax Dutch ovens. So what I'm gonna do is, um, is use my Gilly Kettle Hobo Stove <laughs> attachment here. Now this usually fits on top of the uh, the Gilly Kettle fire pan and you can use it to cook, uh, I don't know, put a saucepan on top or whatever. But I'm just going to put that on the, on the fire and then that handle 
it's not going to obstruct anything and that'll fit on there quite nicely so it'll bring it up off the heat a bit and that'll give me a nice skillet to fry on so I'm just going to create a space here amongst the coals somewhere flat that looks good I'll get the gilly kettle hobo attachment on there So it's just a case now of getting some oil on there. And I'll just chuck those onions straight on because I think it's going to get pretty hot pretty soon. Well folks, these are done. Well folks, that was a great meal. We're absolutely stuffed. The bread was spot on. The steak was cooked to perfection. A bit of salad in there as well for, for uh, health reasons. <laughs> but uh, we're just gonna get the fire back up now because as you can see, it's, it's getting a bit dark. We've got a kettle on here just to do the washing up and then uh, we'll have a couple of beers and then retire to the, to the tent, I think. Um, yeah, until tomorrow. afternoon now so we're gonna get the fire on nice and early I've got a lot of dried um, birch and oak here which we'll get on and hopefully build up a, a really nice bed of hot coals because that's what you need really if you're gonna be uh, roasting a, a meat joint you want to get the coals as hot as possible because you need a fairly high temperature so when you're trying to roast a joint in a Dutch oven it's always a good idea to have some kind of uh, trivet on the bottom of the, uh, the oven to lift the joint up. What I'm going to use here are just a couple of carrots. Um, I'm not going to bother peeling them. I'm just going to slice them lengthways and that will give a good base for the, um, the pork joint to rest on. 
I am just going to put a little bit of oil in the pan as well because I washed this the other night and I usually re-oil um, my Dutch ovens after every time I use them just to keep the, uh, the rust from setting in Tris has seasoned the joint. We've just rubbed some salt in there and we've got some um, fresh rosemary from the garden back home. So I'm just going to pop the lid onto the Dutch oven now and just wait until these, these coals are ready. For dessert we're going to attempt a blackberry crumble. Um, this is the first time we've tried this recipe. So we're going to do it in the FT1 small Dutch oven. So Tris is going to prepare that now. So we've just got the pork joint on there. The coals haven't completely burnt down yet, but it'll not be long. That'll give it the Dutch oven a chance to warm up. I'm going to put just a few coals on top because this is a pork crackling joint. So we're going to have to have some heat on top, but I just don't want to put too much on. Just enough to start to crisp it up I think. Yeah, that was a fairly decent meal. The only um, issues we had was that the coals uh, began to lose a bit of heat towards the end and the potatoes were struggling so we had to get the little fire going on the, underneath them to sort them out. But um, I think that's, that's the problem with campfires, they're notoriously inefficient. I mean, we put quite a bit of oak on there and uh, seasoned birch but it still didn't last very long. Pretty usable heat perhaps an hour and a half and then it just tends to peter out so um, I think in the first instance if you are cooking a lot of things on Dutch ovens you really need to get a massive fire going, a, a good big fire or alternatively use barbecue briquettes um, we use those Aussie heat beads quite frequently in fact I'll often travel with a bag of them in the truck just in case you can't find any wood um, and, and they'll last for up to two and a half hours sometimes you can easily roast chickens and all those types of things but yeah I suppose it's uh, campfire cooking is never really that easy it does take a bit of uh, practice and things do go wrong but when they go right um, it's great to have a full meal uh, out in the woods or out in the, the wilderness so here's the 4 litre Dutch oven after roasting that uh, pork joint. As you can see it's a bit of a mess. Um, what I tend to do in these situations is I'll scrape what I can off the bottom and then um, put some water in, maybe it's just a centimetre or two and then get it back on the fire and let it boil away for a while and that tends to take a lot of the gunk off the bottom 
and then once it's dried I'll just re-coat it with some um, with some oil and it should be ready to go again next time Well folks, that's, uh, that's one fine dessert. Credit to Tris for knocking this up. I made the fresh custard off camera, so we didn't say that. Didn't come out of a carton or anything. But Tris went out and um, picked the blackberries, um, made the crumble, and this, oh, it's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Well folks, it's Monday morning, so we're all packed up now, we're just about to head back. Uh, so yeah, the, the humble Dutch camp, woodsman oven, whatever you want to call them. You're not going to want to take one of these backpacking with you unless you're feeling uh, particularly energetic. But for the back of your camper van or your four-wheel drive, they're a really useful addition to your cook kit. So I hope you found that video useful. Um, as ever, uh, I'd just like to say thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.